the channel again. Uh, so today the video is going to be all about hammers. Um, we're going to look, have a look at all different hammers and what their uses are and what one I think you should get, what weight of hammer I think you should get uh, so you're not using a hammer that's too heavy for yourself or too light for the work. So uh, the first two hammers we're going to look at are both claw hammers. Um, but you can see that this one's much more curved than this one. Uh, so this is a curved claw hammer, this is a, a ripping claw hammer. Um, and basically the ripping claw hammer is used for s sort of demolition more, more than more than this would be because if you've got a workpiece and you try to, to go in with the claw then there's a good chance that you could hit your knuckles off of the workpiece whether it's a wall or whatever it is you're trying to if you're trying to remove a piece of wood or whatever it is, plastic, metal from the wall, then you could you could hit your knuckles off the wall. So much better with this, so you can get in and your hand is well away from the wall. Um, so these normally come, uh, these two are 16 ounce hammers. Um, uh, you do get much bigger ones, you get 20 ounce and 32 ounce hammers, but I'll, I would recommend somewhere between 16 and 20 ounces, uh, especially for beginners because uh, the heavier the hammer, of course, you do get uh, more more pound with it, but uh, it's also worth bearing in mind that the, the longer you hold a heavier hammer, it's going to get very sore in your arm. So, and particularly if you're working above your head, um, if you were nailing a ceiling up, for example, plasterboard ceiling, just as an example, then it would, it would be very tiring on your arms. Uh, so, so that's claw hammers. Um, uh, as I say, between 16 and 20 ounce ideal weight and in terms of what claw is better, it really depends what you're intending to do. I think maybe the curved claw is probably probably a bit more useful for the beginner than the beginner DIYer. Um, if you intend to do a lot of demolition, if you've just bought a house for example and uh, there's, you need a, to do a whole renovation, then maybe think about getting a ripping claw um, because it will be It'll be a lot easier and safer on your hands. Uh, so that's claw hammers. And now something much bigger. Uh, this is a three pound club hammer. Uh, three pound is about four and a half or five kilos, I think. Um, so this is good for driving in stakes, um, tent pegs, uh, you, or marquee pegs. Obviously tent pegs are quite small, but uh, you could drive in marquee pegs with this. It's also good for brick layers. Brick layers use this for chopping out bricks and um, if you just generally need a, a bigger a bigger heavier hammer to to get more more force um, than a claw hammer. Um, a, claw, a decent claw hammer is is okay for demolition uh, again as we've said but if you're going to be doing a lot of heavy hitting with it then it is better to have a club hammer because you don't want to be putting all the force on a, a smaller hammer all the time. Um, so as I say, these these are normally between about three and a half to four and a half pounds. Uh, you do get bigger ones. You get ones with longer handles as well. Uh, obviously, a, a, if you had a much longer handle, you'd be getting onto a something like a sledgehammer. Um, but these the, these are good hammers in themselves. You know, you can break up slabs with these. You can break up bricks. You can actually cut slabs with them with this and a bolster. You could you could hit a line across a slab and and break it. Um, so it's not so much used in woodworking necessarily, but it does have a lot of uses overall. Uh, so that's the club hammer. Then we have two similar hammers here, fairly similar hammers, which are both uh, metal working hammers. Now you can still drive in nails with these if you have, if this is the only hammer that you have, um, yes you can still drive in nails with them. but. These are primarily metal working hammers, um, so, so these would be used for striking metal punches, um, centre punches and uh, chisels and things like that. Um, the, two, the only difference that you'll see apart from the, the handle length uh, is that the two ends, not, not the face end but the other end you can see are very different. So this is called a ball pen end, this is a ball pen hammer and that's generally used for shaping metal and um, so you so you can form metal sheeting with that you can 
you can hit it into shape and so blacksmiths use that and you can take off corners you can you can round rivets with that if you're if you're doing riveting and metal working you can you can uh, use it to round the head of, heads of the rivets and uh, that, this one's fairly similar uh, but this one has more of a instead of a round it's got a it's got a, a sort of wedge, a sort of taper on it, so you can use that to get into corners. If you were if you were folding a piece of metal, let's say, you could use that to get into the corner to to help you fold it. Um, if you were folding it in a vice, for example, you could hit it with the face and then then move to the other side. You can also use both of these hammers for putting in small nails as well, um, which is which is one use in woodworking for these two hammers. Um, if you have a very small nail that you're struggling to to hold in your hand, uh, if you're scared in case you hit your finger, then these two hammers, instead of having this big face here, you can just use the small, the small uh, round on here to to actually, um, if you imagine, just to to get down in and hit, hit the nail. Same with this one. So this this wedge here, because it goes very narrow, obviously you can see how it'll actually sort of slide between your fingers, so you can actually you can reach the nail that way, you've just got to watch because it is a very narrow surface you've got to watch that you, you do actually hit the nail and don't accidentally hit hit the workpiece and maybe damage it. Um, so that's a cross pane hammer, um, so that's the cross pane because it goes across like that and the ball pane is this half round ball. So um, this is a, uh, it doesn't actually have a weight on it. Uh, but certainly it's, it's a good bit lighter than the claw hammer and has a wooden, both of them have wooden handles um, doesn't really matter if it's got wooden handles or fiberglass handles or steel handles or whatever uh, wooden handles are probably more likely to break um, under a lot of pressure uh, but these, these types of hammers shouldn't be under too much pressure anyway it should just be you know general metal working and things like that so, so that's the cross pen hammer and ball pen hammer uh, the next one is just a rubber mallet. This is quite a big rubber mallet, uh, bigger than, than you would normally see. And again, this this would be good for for putting in stakes. Um, if you were out camping, for example, you know this would be good for for putting in stakes and pegs and things. Um, also, if you want to move a, a workpiece up slightly, but you don't want to risk damaging the face of it, use a rubber hammer so that so that the rubber is. Instead of metal, metal will leave an in imprint on it, whether it's steel or wood or whatever. It's, there's a good chance it'll leave an imprint on the workpiece. So if you use a rubber hammer, it's going to, because it's a little bit softer, it's going to take, uh, it's going to take much more of a force to, to, uh, to, to actually do any damage to it. Uh, so, so that's the rubber hammer. Um, again, usually usually have a wooden handle. I have seen them with fiberglass handles but rubber hammers tend to have wooden handles um, and as I say you get them all different sizes. Some even have one side which is soft and one side which is very hard. So one side is like sort of rubber but the other side is more kind of nylon material, hard nylon. So that, that gives you the option of a very soft side or, or a, a much harder side. The harder side still isn't as hard as metal, uh, as a metal head but um, so that, that that's the options for for the rubber mallet, rubber hammer. Uh, this one again, this is just a panel pin hammer. So you can see if we look at the cross pin hammer again, it's very very similar. Um, the only difference is this is this is much wider than this. Uh, so this again, it's just for putting in panel pins. It's specifically for putting in small pins. So it's got a small head, so when you're holding a pin, uh, if you do miss the pin and hit your finger, you're not going to get as, as much of a, a blow off of it as you would off of a, for example, a claw hammer. Um, and this again can be used for getting in between your fingers to actually strike a, a small pin or small nail. Um, so the, pretty inexpensive and worth having if you're going to be doing a lot of that kind of work, if you're going to be putting in a lot of small nails or that, then definitely invest in a, a panel pin hammer or indeed a cross pen hammer. So that's the panel pin hammer and this one here is just just a very small claw hammer. Uh, it can be used for the same purposes. I wouldn't 
uh, suggest putting too much pressure on this because um, it says four ounce, so it's a very light hammer. And even just flexing it slightly, I can actually feel I can feel the shaft flexing slightly. So uh, I don't I don't think this would be able to take an awful lot of force. It wasn't very expensive, so I don't I don't expect it to be. To, to take a lot of force but I guess you could use it for again for small nails it's still got a small head so so you wouldn't have too much risk of it hitting you and you can pull out small nails with it as well but obviously uh, the, the the uses for this hammer are much more limited than, than most of the other hammers uh, so that's a four ounce claw hammer and it's worth mentioning as well that these hammers uh, can, you, can be used in conjunction uh, with an axe and I'll just demonstrate that so you can see here uh, we have a log to split and I can go in I could use a big axe and you know I could swing it all the way behind me and come in with a big axe and probably split this but uh, if you want to work in a more confined space and you don't want pieces of log flying all over the place you can put the axe in you can see I've already got a split here but for talking sake you can put the axe in and then Use the hammer to Now this piece of wood here was 450 millimetres or 18 inches long. Now most logs normally aren't, aren't as long as that and you can see that that split that quite easily there with a few, a few strikes of the claw hammer. Uh, we were able to split that with the claw hammer and the axe. Axes can also be used in conjunction with claw hammers for prizing material up. So, if I can just show you. <clears throat> okay, so I've got the hammer and axe here, and we've got about a piece of wood nailed onto this piece of wood. So, if I wanted to take that off with a, an axe and hammer, it's very simple. Just put the axe in, perhaps up at the corner. And work your way down. And it'll come right off, no problem. Um, and axes as well can also be used to drive nails. Uh, if you were stuck, you could use this face here to actually put nails of any size in. Uh, not not the best recommendation, but if you're if you're stuck, then then use an axe for driving nails. And again, uh, this is a great camping tool, so this this can be used for camping as well. You, you can split firewood with this. You can you can cut food with this even, so you could if you had a nice sharp blade, I'm sure you could cut um, chicken fillets with it if you wanted uh, or whatever you had on your camping trip uh, but that's that's the main uses for all these hammers and the, this axe and how they can be used in conjunction so I hope you found that interesting, I hope you can use these tips and I will see you again in the next video Thank you.